Um, so, yeah, I'm going to talk about Richard Speck right now. There seems to be a few more people in chat, and, um, yeah, I have become a beautiful mind. I have so many goddamn notes. This guy literally spread so much damage over states. I mean, which isn't, you know, exactly anything new, because so did Ted Bundy, so did Henry Lee Lucas, so did fucking everyone. But this guy, whew, okay, fuck this. All right, I'm going to talk about Richard Speck. Who here in chat knows who Richard Speck is? I me. Say I, me. <laughs> Richard Speck technically was the very first person to ever be defined in the press or to be ever have the term used mass murderer, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. And his life, basically, from beginning, was chaos. Um, he was born um, on the eve of when America joined the world war- joined World War II. So he was born December sixth, nineteen forty-one. You know, December seventh is when Pearl Harbor happened, and that's when you know shit went down. And he was born to a family who had eight children. And he was born in Illinois. Um, As a young boy, he was really super close to his dad. Really close to his dad. And um, they moved to a small town in Illinois called Monmouth. Um... Unfortunately, in 1947, when Richard was still very young, his father died of a heart attack. Completely devastating him, you know, as it would anybody. And so, you know, his mom, who he was very close with too, um, basically is like, Jesus Christ, I have eight fucking kids and zero help zero income so naturally and pretty understandably you know she moved in with her mother who lived in texas so she moved the entire family from illinois to texas and really oh my god fantastic you can't not get oh god you know what nope this is all bad Come back, Jeannie. Thank you. Um, so they moved to Texas. And three years after moving to Texas, you know, and of course, Richard, not happy that he moved to Texas. Raised, grew up in Illinois. His father dies. And then he's forced to relocate somewhere else. Teachers described him as very uninterested, um, having a really hard time with schoolwork, paying attention, anything. Um, Eventually, he dropped out of school at the age of 16. He attended one semester of high school and said, nah, fuck this, and left. Um, He was arrested for petty crimes, you know, robbery, fighting, basically anything he could get himself into. Uh, He was arrested about 10 times before the age of 19. And at 19, he would, uh oh, this can't be good. Please don't blow me up. All right. Well, I'm going to pretend like I knew I was supposed to do that. Hmm. Okay. So he meets 15 year old Shirley Malone, and they become. Very, very, really? Why can't I fuck? Let me, thank you. Oh, probably because it's too. (laughs) They became close very quick. Oh, Jesus. And fairly shortly after they began dating, Shirley got pregnant. Now, what, I mean, even now, what do you do? What happens? Like, what happens when you get someone pregnant? You marry them. That's what you fucking did in the 50s and the 60s. You get someone pregnant. You marry them. 
So, oh boy. Okay, I'm just going to do this. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I'm so scared. Oh. Yay. How did that, how did that not kill them? You, you're just fucking hanging out next to a bomb and you're like, oh, I'm good. All right. Well, that's my life. Okay. Wait. Wait. Why are you fighting people over there? Oh, God. Who? Uh-oh. I didn't want all this attention. What's going on? No, no. Nay, nay. Oh, you're fucking with my flow, dude. Okay. Here we go. Fucking fight my thing. All right. So he marries Shirley Malone. And he was 20. She was 15. Ugh. But back then, whatever. Jerry Lee Lewis married his 14-year-old fucking cousin. Oh my god! When did everyone decide that I needed to die? Oh boy. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I fucking suck. This is what happens when I try to talk and play games at the same time. It doesn't work. It's just me flailing around aimlessly. Alright, here we go. Where the fuck am I still? Bitch. Alright. Oh, my motherfucking God. Where am I? All right. I'm not too far. So. Meets and marries Shirley. They have, well, <laughs> first he gets into a drunken bar fight and he's put in jail for three weeks. So he misses the birth of his daughter, his only child. And pretty much he just continues to be a piece of shit for the next few years of their marriage. He regularly accuses her of infidelity, which, you know, surefire sign that he was cheating, which he was constantly, uh, on more than one occasion, sexually assaulted her, would beat her, come to her, her house, terrorize her, terrorized her mother. Basic. Backing away from that. No, no. No, 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 no. Why? I did Really? You know what? Get him, Robin Williams. Meh. <laughs> so. <sighs> Basically, by the end of, like, 1965, their marriage has run its course. She is fucking done. With Richard Speck. He's been put in jail multiple times. She's trying to raise a kid. Plus he's abusive. You know who the fuck wants to live with that? So. She divorces him. And takes their daughter. Which. Just sends Richard over the fucking edge. And he. Is devastated. Completely pissed off. So he does basically what anybody with alcohol, drug, and anger issues does. Is when he's pissed off, he goes out, he gets real fucked up, and then he goes looking for a fight. Which he did. Um, he got into... And this is after he's been jailed twice for robbery. Um, he got into a bar fight with another man and ended up stabbing him. His mom got him a lawyer, and even though this was his umpteenth charge, uh, she convinced the judge that it was a good old-fashioned drunken brawl and nothing else, so he served no time in jail and uh, <laughs> got a $10 fine. Why? Why do you keep coming up behind me? You know, I just need to move. This is my fault. This is my fault, all right? Necromantic scour... Ugh, this isn't your fault. It's my fault. Okay? Okay, can you die so I can continue my story? Yes, your ascension. You're so cool. Alright. Oh, God. There's more over. Okay, where am I supposed to go? I'm scared. Wait. Nope. Oh, good. More on the steps. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Just trying to get away. So, yeah, gets into a drunken fight, stabs a dude, and then 
Not very long after that, he gets real drunk and goes into an apartment complex and just waits in the parking lot until a young woman gets out of her car where he attacks her with a knife. She's screaming and screaming and screaming. He's like, stop screaming or I'll kill you, you know, but she doesn't fucking listen. Thank God. Screams enough to where neighbors come out. He runs off. So he basically realizes, you know, my time in Dallas, Texas has kind of passed. (laughs) I need to get the fuck out of here because all the cops knew who he was. He'd been arrested multiple times since his teenage years. He even admitted to himself he started to uh, a, a later at a psychologist. He said, I started drinking when I was 12 and I was drunk daily by the time I was 15. So think about what that does to a growing brain. Um, so yeah, he, he, he fucking yeeted out of Dallas. He got the, the fuck out of Dodge. Got out of Dodge, which was smart. Because the cops definitely would... Oh, Jesus. Okay, why am I getting all this hate? Okay, whoa, oh my god. Okay, no. I'm gonna put this thing up. That'll help. Come on. Oh my god. This is the worst. You know what? I'm hiding. No! You can't get me. I'm hiding. Oh my god. Don't you... I can't play games and talk. What am I doing with my life? Oh my god. Jesus Christ. <laughs> there's any new people in stream, I apologize because this is usually what this is. It's just me dying all the time. So yeah, he gets the fuck out of Dodge. Leaves Dallas. Decides, I'm going to go home to Monmouth. To Mom, to Monmouth? Mon- I can't even fucking pronounce it. Illinois. To Monmouth, Illinois. Goes back. And he tries to reconnect with a couple of his older sisters. But issue was, they were already grown and out of the house. By the time, you know, Richard really came of age. They didn't really know him very well. And not only that, he was kind of known as a piece of shit. So, for pretty acceptable reasons, you know... They didn't want him in their house. (laughs) So, okay, I'm going to go fix my armor because I probably have like 50 gold worth of damage. 22, not bad. That's not bad. Reach out and touch faith. All right. Um, Christ, where the fuck was I? Yeah, so he gets the fuck out of Dodge. Goes back to Monmouth. Talks to his older sisters. They're like, nah, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> we don't want any of your shit. And pretty much as soon as he arrives in his hometown in Monmouth, he starts doing what he does. Robbery, petty theft, breaking and entering. And... <sighs> yeah. Yeah. He he basically just wreaks havoc on his little town. Uh, he gets into fights, a couple drunken brawls, and uh, then he gets really drunk one night and breaks into a house and starts robbing it. When the owner, a 65-year-old woman, walked in through the door, he ran up to the front, grabbed her, brought her back to the bedroom, Forced her to strip naked, and then he raped her. He was 23? 23? 24? I think, yeah, he was 24. He was 24 at this time. Um, raped a 65-year-old woman. She eventually got away. He tied her up with bed sheets that he had cut into strips with a very large knife that he had brought with him. And she said that he was a very polite young man with sandy blonde hair, who had a soft southern draw, which is pretty weird in Illinois, you know. Southern draw is going to be noticed. So 
Not even a week later, a barmaid is found murdered out back in the alleyway. And she was killed by a hit to the stomach. Something or someone hit her so hard in the abdomen that it ruptured her liver. And it ruptured, basically it shattered her stomach. And Richard was known to frequent that bar a lot. And her friends even said that Richard had expressed interest in her. And that she found him very, he made her uncomfortable. But, so these guys are thinking, all right, this guy just got back into town. An elderly woman that he raped described a young man, sandy blonde hair, potmarked skin with a southern accent. They are like, holy shit. So this spec guy, this spec guy is looking good for the murder of this barmaid. But what are the chances that a dude with a southern accent in fucking Illinois also raped a woman. So they're like, oh, this this dude's good for both of these crimes. So, what do you do as a cop? You ask him to come in for questioning, which the police did. They're like, I think we've got our guy. So they had, they invited him down, and he willingly went to the police station. And they were interviewing him about all of these murders. And um, basically, in the middle of the interrogation, Richard says, I don't feel good. I think I'm really getting sick. I feel like there's something wrong with my stomach. I'm not feeling too good. So the cops are like, oh, do you want to reschedule the interrogation for another time? And he says, sure. And the cops just let him go. He's a murder suspect. And <laughs> he re- suspected a rape and a murder committed within one week of each other. And this dude is just let go by the cops. They're like, that's fine. That's fine. We can reschedule. So you're a murderer. <laughs> What are you going to do when the cops let you go? Uh, nope. 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 I take, nope. I'm not doing it. You're not fucking killing me. I'm not doing it. Get out of here. Get out of here. All right. I refuse to die and live in front of people again. Okay. 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 There we go. So sorry. So yeah. He commits a rape, most likely committed a murder, and all he had to do was ask the cops if he could just reschedule his interrogation because he had an upset tummy. For all intents and purposes, that is what happened in my eyes. I'm sorry, but if someone says, Oh, I don't feel good, I say, Oh, that sucks. <laughs> The, the elderly woman that you're being accused of raping also is not feeling great. <laughs> the barmaid, too. Sorry, I'm going to take a strip. Strip? Sip. Christ. So. He skips the fuck out of town. But he can't make it too far. Because he's broke. He's not at a port city. He can't be like, yo, get me a job on a boat, right? Wherever the fuck we are in this little ass town in Illinois. So he books it over to Chicago where his sister, Martha, is living with her husband. Now, Martha doesn't really know him that well either, but against her better judgment, she decides to take him in and let him live in her house, which that's a sisterly thing to do. And, you know, he gives her this bullshit excuse about why he's fled Monmouth. He's like, oh, I I had to leave. I had to leave Dallas and and come here because uh, 
there were uh, drug gangs after me and blah, blah, blah. You know, basically a giant load of horseshit. And his sister fig- knew it was horseshit. I mean, it's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. You know, they all knew it was bullshit. But really? Can I just like, oh, God. I hate this thing. I hate you. But so her husband gets Richard a job on a freighter for a steelworks. And he wasn't even at the job for two months before he got in trouble for (laughs) fighting with someone like a superior on the ship. Still more to learn. Bleh. Um, what the fuck? They're already destroyed. Why can I not destroy them again? All right. What are we fucking doing? Oh hell no! Is there more shit down here? No. Oh, this is so stupid. God fucking damn it! 